The Miami Project to Cure Paralysis, a center of excellence at the University of Miami's Miller School of Medicine, is the world's premier spinal cord injury research center. The basic science operations are housed in the Lewis Pope Life Center and translated into the clinical arena in the Christine E. Lynn Rehabilitation Center. My father taught me as a physician, the most important thing you can do is something to change the practice of medicine. And Barth Green can't claim that, but the Miami Project can with a straight face say, we've changed the medical books. We've changed the practice of medicine. I remember it like it was yesterday, it was a Saturday, and I received a call from his best friend. To this day, I don't answer calls from his best friend. Um, she told me that Darius was in an accident, it was really bad, and that he had been shot. He's been airlifted, and to meet them at Rider Trauma, Jackson Memorial Hospital, Miami. So I was in a car accident. I was in the back seat passenger, but I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. All I know is waking up in the back of the seat, trying to get up, and I couldn't. And then I just woke up in the hospital. I'm gonna give him my best. I survived. I got a second chance, and I don't wanna live like this. I wanna give it all I got and see what happens. I think one of the most difficult things for me still is when I meet someone who has been newly injured. And no matter what, it still brings me back to the moment of my injury. I remember to this day the, the emotions, feeling that my life was over, feeling that there was no hope, the despair, the anguish, and you're looking for answers, but they're not there. But once I found out that I was paralyzed, I just, I knew it was gonna be a long process. I knew it was a long road. I knew I had to be disciplined. I knew I had to work harder than I did when I was walking. So it just step by step, day by day, I was gonna figure it out. It's incredibly exciting to see ideas that started in the research lab to make it to the clinic. It's really a, a one in a million type of event. There's so many great research ideas that start in the lab and then die in the lab. So to see two, three, four big uh, endeavors that started in the Miami Project Laboratories and make it to clinical research and actually help patients is incredibly gratifying. This is a project that started almost 10 years ago now, uh, at least for me. And this started as a uh, discovery uh, project to discover a compound that can promote axon growth. Um, and recently that has developed into a large NIH grant where the eventual goal is to develop this and take it into humans. These programs are being fast-tracked to clinical application. Um, in no small part because of how the Miami Project conducts its research, how it merges the clinical practice with the research practice and creates these channels of constant communication between the scientists and the clinicians, which have really helped us hone in our research in a way that we can translate it efficiently into clinical practice. People who don't know about what we're doing is that every day, over 30 of the smartest people on earth are running small teams to employ the full stack of academic research to understand and advance the treatment of spinal cord injury. So importantly, we're not just care or just cure, we're the full spectrum here. And we are doing this every day locally and we can't do it without the help of people with spinal cord injuries. What I'm most excited about is that, you know, we've recently moved into the Christine E. Lynn Rehabilitation Center. And now we have the ability in the Lois Pope Life Center to do discovery and translational work. And that work can then seamlessly move into the Lynn Center. 
where we can actually target spinal cord injured patients, traumatic brain injured patients, and stroke patients. And that allows us to open up therapeutic windows by which we can actually develop new drugs, compounds, and rehabilitation strategies to promote recovery. My wife was right down my side. Mm -hmm. She was right there. I gotta do this for her, I gotta do this for my daughter. Of course, I'm sobbing, and I'm like, are you okay? And his first thing to me was, I'm alive. Um, I remember staring at his feet because um, just thinking like if they were ever gonna move again. And I was just staring at him. And um, th those were the first moments we saw each other. He was smiling and just his positive self. And I was the emotional wreck. <laughs> Seeing in front of my eyes the impact that our discoveries have on the patients and how what we do every day um, can really strongly impact patients' lives in the future. Now I feel double the excitement when we get a positive outcome in the lab. So the MAMI project continues to expand um, its portfolio in terms of what types of injuries, what types of therapeutic windows we're using to promote functional recovery. I would just look at myself, think about moving, and one day I moved my arm and I saw how powerful the mind was. And that's how I got involved in everything. They implanted a generator here that's typically implanted in Parkinson's disease patients for deep brain stimulation. And there's a, a, a wire that comes up here that connects to electrodes that just sit on the surface of his brain. So it's not diving into the brain, it's just sitting there listening. And so it's over the area of the brain uh, that correlates with activity with his hands. And so when he's thinking about that, we can pick that signal up, transmit it uh, externally to this wire that then goes to a computer in the back, translates that signal, and then sends his desired movement uh, to a glove that he wears. And he's able to configure and uh, turn that off and on through a phone application that connects to the computer that does the processing. The Miami Project partnered with Falchi Adaptive Motorsports to test if the signals from German's brain could be used to drive their modified 800 horsepower NASCAR style race car. I didn't know what to expect, you know. I was nervous. But then once on the track, there's no other feeling like it. Not anybody could say, you know, you're paralyzed when you drove a NASCAR car. Now, like, I have a lot of hunger for everything. Like, I want to push myself to the limit. And that brought me here, you know, not being afraid anymore. I try to draw on the love that I felt when my parents walked in the room my dad looked in my eyes and I looked at him and I couldn't talk. I couldn't even breathe, but just the eye connection, that eye contact that, that I knew he was still there. And I tried to make that same eye contact that my dad made to me to try to show that there's someone here for you. Just as if my dad was here for me. Nick just gave everything up. He had the best job, the highest public profile. All that became noise. All he cared about was Mark and Mark's future, Mark's happiness, Mark's function. And you can't say no to somebody like that. You have to believe and put forth the work. It's not gonna happen overnight. Darris and his wife, Tasha, dreamed of having a child of their own. With help from the pioneering research from the Miami Project, that dream became reality when their baby girl, Tashi, was born earlier this year. Four years and, and, and it happened. Our baby, our baby girl was born August 5th, 2022. The Miami Project is 
is is a blessing for me. It's oh man, God is good. We got your back. We're gonna get you back on your feet again. And don't worry, the Miami Project will never, ever let you down. In the years since Mark's injury coalesced a movement to find a cure for paralysis. There have been many challenges, but also many discoveries and achievements, bringing the researchers closer each day to delivering on Nick's promise to Mark that a cure for paralysis will be found.